Good morning, dearly beloved, Greater Galilee Missionary Baptist Church. Oh, it's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. We give honor to God this morning. Amen. To uh, the officers of this church. Amen. To our trustees. My wife, God bless you. Good to have you with us again on this day. Amen. The Lord is still blessing us, you all. He's keeping us still. Amen. And I'm here again asking and asking and begging you to please continue to wear your mask, social distance, and wash those hands. Amen. We really, really, we're not out of this thing yet. We are still striving to do what's right, to keep it everybody's safe amen and i'm i'm seeing a decline in numbers but uh people are still sick amen they're still getting sick and some are still they're still passing on amen so we just solicit uh your support amen that we will continue to follow the guidelines that set before us to keep everyone safe amen uh, certainly, I still believe God is speaking to us and teaching us how to be obedient to simple things. Amen. Uh, and uh, obedience is one of uh, humanity's problems. Amen. Just to follow instructions. Certainly, uh, this is a good day. This is the day that God has made and we will rejoice, and we will certainly be glad in it. Uh, let us have a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we come in the name of Jesus. First of all, we thank you for this day. Thank you, Father, for another opportunity to stand before these, your people. And we pray, Lord God, that your word will come forth. And we believe and we pray, God, that uh, it will be received and it is given. Father God, for we know your word is needed in times such as these that we're living in. And we pray that it is received on this day. And we pray, God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. For you are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's go to the book of Lamentations. Go to the book of Lamentations, the third chapter, the 22nd through the 26th verse. That is Lamentations, third chapter, 22 through the 26th verse. You will find these words recorded. It is the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and wait for the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Our subject today will be tagged as, I will not lose hope. Amen. Look to someone. If you're with someone right now, look them in the eye and tell it and put emphasis on it. Tell them, I will not lose hope. Amen. Now, speak to yourself. If you're by yourself, if you're in your, in your home, in your recliner, Oh, in the, on the highway, traveling. Now just speak to yourself and tell self, 
I will not lose hope. I will not lose hope. Amen. A lot of things are going on around us during this season in our lives. A lot of things are happening. A lot of unrest. Tragedies all around us. Loved ones leaving us. And it seemed like there's nowhere to turn. But you could tell yourself, through all of this that we're going through, I will not lose hope. There may be some who know what you're going through. Amen. And they, are, they are know exactly what you are experiencing at this particular moment. And they could really relate to you, amen, because you're still standing through all of this that's going on. I will not lose hope. And then, you know, I, I, I know some are very educated in this area, but I'm, if something that I, I may know what the definition is, but there may be something missing. I mean, you know, sometimes you may think it's like this, but it's not the way you thought it. <sighs> Amen. But I looked up that word, what is hope? And hope is an optimistic state of mind that is based on an expectation of a positive outcome mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with respect to events and circumstances in one's life. Hope is to cherish a desire for something good in the future. Amen. Just, uh, just in your mind, you are hoping, you are you have this desire that you cherish. Mm -hmm. That something is going to happen good in the future. Hope. Hope. We look at this book of Lamentation. It, it's, a, it's a book. It's a very short book. But the first couple of chapters, three chapters, if you will, they are hmm. We see God's anger in this in the book of Lamentation. We see God anger at sin. And we know God, he's, he's a good God, but there's some things God will not tolerate. Amen. But we see because of his people, amen, his people, Israel, they could not let go of Sin. Sin is going to be around you all. It's going to be around us. I don't care where you go or how far you try to escape. Sin is always there. And one thing I want you to know today, we should avoid. Amen. We should avoid one thing I know we should try to avoid not making God angry. Are you here? Amen. We should avoid. Amen. And, and, and the only way we could do that is not, not to keep doing what we know we shouldn't be doing. Amen. If, if you're getting wrong results, you have to change. Isn't that right? 
But we see here that God got angry with the sin of his people. Amen. Lamentations, really, my brothers and sisters, is a book of sorrows. Amen. And the reason for the writing of Lamentation is to teach people that to obey God is to, in, to invite, to, to, to disobey God is inviting disaster and to show that God suffers when his people suffer. This is what Lamentation the, 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 this is what lamentation uh, is all about, amen, uh, to teach people that disobey God is that we are inviting disaster whenever we disobey God. That's all this book is saying, and, and it, I, I believe is, is very much needed on this day. Amen. And we need to also understand Lamentations is a book that say when, 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 when we suffer, God suffer. Amen. Jeremiah is the known author of this book. And we see that uh, he's known as the weeping prophet. And uh, he's, we see that he, 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 he grieves deeply because of the destruction of Jerusalem and uh, devastation of his nation. But in the middle of the book, in the depths of his grief, there shines a ray of hope. God's compassion is never, he, he, he is ever present, and his, his faithfulness is great. Jeremiah realizes that it is only the Lord's mercy that has prevented total, amen, destruction. It was God's mercy, amen, and, and God's grace that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that it, was, it was God's mercy that kept them from being destroyed. My God. The book shows us that uh, the serious consequences, amen, of sin and, and how we can still have hope in the midst of tragedy. How many of you know that you can have hope in the midst of tragedy. It may not, oh, a tragedy is not a good thing. But when you know, you know. When you know you have God on your side, you know that you could have hope in the midst of tragedy. My God today. Hmm. That's because... God is able to turn things around in the midst of what we're going through right now. God, he is still turning things around. Isn't that right? We see the timeless importance of prayer and Confession of sin. We, we will face tragedy in, the, in life, but in the midst of our affliction, there's hope in God. Hallelujah today. My God, my God, my brothers and sisters, there are times when we come to the forks of our, in our road, amen, and we don't know which way to turn, but we have hope in God that he will point us in the direction that he would have us go, isn't that right? Jeremiah was a prophet who witnessed the destruction of Jerusalem. The nation of Judah had already been defeated. Uh, the temple destroyed and captives were taken to Babylon. Jeremiah's tears. He was a weeping prophet. prophet. Amen. Jeremiah's tears were for the suffering and humiliation of the people. 
the tears penetrates deeper in Jeremiah's heart because God had rejected the people for their wicked ways. Amen. If you want to be rejected by God, continue doing, uh, performing in your wicked ways. Mm. My brothers and my sisters, Babylon, although sinful, was God's instrument to punish Judah and his and its capital, Jerusalem. See, God can take, amen, you know sin is going to be around, you know wickedness is going to be around, it's going to always be. But God can still use those to get our attention, amen, yes, they mean it for, good, for bad, but God can turn it around and bring good out of it. Are you with me today? The people of Jerusalem, they were pleading to God to punish Babylon, amen, for their sinful ways, amen. And he, they pleaded with God to punish Babylon uh, because what happened is God had punished them and they pleaded to punish them like you punished us, if you will. Deal with them like you dealt with us. Are you listening today? God had already done this because he passed judgment on Babylon. Solomon's temple was there, which was called God's dwelling place, or a place of meeting in Jerusalem, which represented God's presence with his people. The temple was the central place of worship. Many in Jeremiah's day assumed that God would never allow his temple to be harmed. Its destruction symbolized God's rejection of his very own people that he no longer lived among them. Today, I believe it's safe to say that God's place of worship is not as important to God as our priorities in worship. Are you here? God's place of worship is not as important as, as our priority. And I will worship for God. Are you here today? Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. The church building. The church building may be beautiful. And it's supposed to be. It's supposed to look as good as uh, or better than the way of uh, than where we live, if you will. I, I, I believe that. I believe the, the building represents uh, the beauty of God where we worship the church house. Amen. But if the people does not sincerely follow God, the church will decay, if you will, within. Amen. The church will decay if the people's heart is not sincere when they go to the house of the Lord, to the temple of God, and worship him. Also, my brothers and sisters, when we look at the physical temple, amen, amen, the material temple, if you will, amen, I, I believe it should look good. I believe it should be beautiful. And also the temple uh, this 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 physical temple, Amen. That 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 that, uh, that houses the the spirit of God, Amen. I believe it need to be taken care of as well, Amen. I, I, I know I'm right about that, Amen. The, the the physical meeting place and the 
temple that houses us within. Amen. Amen. But uh, we want you to know that it's very important today. That we don't get it all messed up, amen. This place here can, amen, can, a storm can come and blow it away. Amen. But the temple that, 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 that houses the Holy Spirit within us, we have to really, really take watch of this temple. Take care of this temple. The scripture tell us. This is a temple of the Holy Spirit, amen, that, that, that dwells within us. We have to take care of this temple, amen. Jeremiah's tears, amen, uh, were sincere and full of compassion. Tears of sorrow does not mean a lack of strength. Amen. Uh, let me say that again. Tears of sorrow does not mean uh, a lack of strength. In uh, John eleven thirty five, we see where Jesus wept. And didn't he do it? Amen. Uh, because he felt sorrow. Amen. In uh, Jerusalem. How do we feel about our society today? Is it worth shedding tears over? If it is to you worth shedding tears over, it's all right. Amen. It's all right. It's all right to shed tears. Uh, if it's not the way you know God would have it be, it's all right to shed tears. Amen. It's all right. It's all right. It's okay. But I just don't want you to lose hope in the midst of it all. Amen. Our world is in turmoil right now, but don't, don't lose hope. Amen. Somebody say we need to keep hope alive. Isn't that right? And uh, how we keep it alive is we can't lose hope. And I, I, I promise, amen, I say let what come with me. I will not lose hope. Hope. In our text today, this third chapter this morning, uh, the scene could have been avoided, if you will. This scene that we're looking at uh, this morning could have been uh, avoided. But I want you to know, uh, because Jeremiah had warned the people for years that this day of destruction uh, would come and it broke his heart to see it being fulfilled. Don't you know when you, 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 could, you could try hard all your life trying to uh, make things right, doing what God have called you to do and speaking what God have told you to speak and you see people not really changing and you see destruction going on all around and when it could have been avoided if only they would just have listened. This is the way Jeremiah felt. He, he, all of the, the, this, this scene here could have been avoided because he had already warned them that destruction would come. If you continue to live in your sinful ways, destruction will come. And, and, and it broke Jeremiah's heart that this happened. It, it was fulfilled. We're always in shock when we hear, when we hear of a tragedy, amen, striking the innocent, something that could have been avoided. It breaks our heart. Amen. And we, we go in shock sometimes because sometimes we feel like they have already heard enough, amen. But you keep on telling them. But sin has all, it has a way of causing great sorrow and destruction. Sin is our worst problem in our world today. Amen. That's the major problem. Amen. And it's always destroying, amen, lifestyles, amen, to many, many of those who 
could just avoid it if only they would just get in position, get right with God. Amen. In Jeremiah's darkest moment, his hope was strengthened with the assurance God had been faithful and would be faithful continually. Are you here today? That gave Jeremiah hope. Amen. His hope was strengthened with that assurance. Jeremiah saw both God's judgment and God's steadfast love. In time of judgment, Jeremiah could still hold on to God's love just as in time of prosperity. He warned God's judgment. How many pastors stood behind this sacred desk, amen, and proclaimed God's judgment if we didn't turn from our wicked ways. How many pastors are preaching and teaching on this day that we need to turn from our wicked ways if we don't turn? Amen. What we have seen this past year is nothing compared to what his judgment could be. Can I get a witness here today? Amen, my brothers and sisters. In time of judgment, Jeremiah could still hold on to God's love just as in time of prosperity. And he warned, amen, America, we have been doing pretty good. Amen. But something happened a little over a year ago. Amen. Things turned around. Things came to a complete halt. But God is still in control. In our lesson today, we witness Jeremiah's sin, a ray of hope, and all the sin and sorrow surrounding him. My brothers and sisters, we ought to see a ray of hope. Amen. And all of this stuff that's going on around us right now, we want you to know we need to see a ray of hope. And the only way you're going to see that hope, you have to declare, I will not lose hope. Amen. I want you to know also, because of God's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassion never fails. God willingly responds with hope, amen, when we ask him. Isn't that right? There have been some sin in our lives. Can I get a witness but discover that a God is still in control and we want you to know that we thought God would not forgive us. Some of you out there under the sound of my voice are saying, I've been in it too long. Uh, God will never forgive me of my sin. But I want you to know that God's love and mercy are greater than any sin that we could ever commit. And he promised forgiveness. I want you to know God wants us, amen, to repent of our sin, amen, and turn from our wicked ways and turn back to him. And then he will make things all right. Can I get a witness here today? God promised forgiveness and how often in our own lives we witness the scene like Jeremiah, amen. He, we've seen God forgive, amen, and he's still forgiving, amen. But our problem is we won't let go. We won't let God, 
Amen. Take control of our lives. He wants to take control. And on the way he can do that as we just repent, amen, and turn from those things that, uh, that so easily beset us, amen. We have to turn from that sin. Mm, we uh, seem like many have fulfilled God's, God's call in our lives, but discover that circumstances appear to contradict our expectation. And we start to question God's character. Amen. God's concern and God's care for us. We start questioning him and we start to grumble and we start asking why. I want you to know, tell yourself today, I will not lose hope. Despite the inner turmoil that grieved Jeremiah's soul and other destruction, he witnessed with his own eyes this man stood still and was able to stand firm on his hope in God, knowing his mercies are new every morning. How I many you know today that every morning, we wake up, we are facing new mercies and new graces every morning. For the God we serve is faithful. God is true to his word and the same holds true today like Jeremiah. We know in whom we have believed and are persuaded that he is able to keep us and all that we have committed, amen, to him. No matter what we uh, may be called upon to do or uh, suffer in this life, we know that God is faithful, amen, and will not suffer us to be tempted above that which we are able to bear, but will make a way to escape so that we may be able to bear it. My brothers and my sisters, God is faithful. Can I get a witness? God is faithful to his word, which cannot be broken. And with the grieving Jeremiah, we can say, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I have hope in him. We are told that there are none, amen, that are good, only God, and God is good. Can I get a witness to those who searches for him? God is even good to those that do not acknowledge him. God is still good to those as well because your breathing, his air. Your eating the food that grows out of his earth. Amen. You are, amen, enjoying the joys of this life. Amen. Because of God, although you don't acknowledge him, God is still good. Amen. I want you to know today, my brothers and sisters, had it not been for the Lord on our side. Oh, where will we be today? Amen. I want you to know he's not far from us. Amen. And he will be found by those who search for him with all their heart. I just want you to know today, I will not lose hope. I will not lose hope, especially Amen. When I think about what he did for me, amen, on Calvary's cross, how he sent his only begotten son to die on the cross for my sin. Can I get a witness here today? I will not lose hope. When I think about how they whipped him all night long, I 
will not lose hope. Amen. How they marched him up. Golgotha's hill. I will not lose hope. As he marched up the hill, amen, he made it to the top of the hill. They laid him on the ground. Isn't that right? Carrying that cross up the hill, amen. He laid him on the ground. Yes, put spikes in his hand, nails in his feet. I will not lose hope. When they hung him, amen, between two thieves, I will not lose hope, amen. When I think about how they did, my Lord and my Savior, put him in a grave that wasn't his. He stayed there Friday, Saturday, and Saturday night. But the Bible says early the third day morning, he got up with all power in his hand, power over death. And power over the grave. He got up, I tell you, with all power in his hand. And that is what gives me hope to know that my God, my Redeemer lives. Can I get a witness here today? Do you know he lives? If you don't mind, look at somebody or just tell yourself, I will not lose hope. I will not. Give up now. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Hallelujah today. I will not lose hope. Yes, Jeremiah, he wept for Jerusalem. He wept for the children of Israel. But he did not lose hope. Amen. God, in spite of all that they were going through, Jeremiah still told them what thus said the Lord, pleaded with them to turn from their wicked ways. He pleaded with them. He prayed to God that God will restore them. Amen. And God is still doing it today. Isn't that right? He's doing it for you and I today. We have been adopted into his family. And he is doing it just for us today. Don't lose hope. Whatever you do, speak to yourself. Say, self, I will not lose hope. Let what come what may. Amen. And I know you're in control of it all. And I will not lose hope. Because at the end of the tunnel, I do see light, isn't that right? I will not lose hope. It might seem like it's far away, but I want you to know God is with you all the way. Don't lose hope. I will not lose hope. I believe Jesus is going to do just what he said he's going to do. I believe he's coming back again. I believe he's coming back after his church. Amen. Not this building, not this temple we talked about earlier. Amen. But this temple, he's coming back after this church. Amen. One without a spot or a blemish. And even those who have blemishes, when he see you striving to do the right thing, amen, God will stand with you. Amen. He's a forgiving God. Amen. You, you, you can't do sin wrong enough. Amen. To what God will not forgive you. Amen. Just ask for forgiveness and he will forgive you of all your sins and he will take care of you along this journey. Amen. God bless you and keep you as our prayer today. My brothers and sisters, right now, Jesus, he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. Amen. Interceding for you and I. He's a good God today. Let us uh, extend the invitation. You may come my letter, Christian Experience Candidate for Baptism. Go to our website, www.greatergalileanbc.com. Amen. If you desire membership, amen, into the household of faith, amen, you could, you could uh, uh, log on, amen, 
and we will send you wherever you want to go. If you want to be a part of this ministry here at the great city of Little Rock, amen, in your, in your area, amen, you could come on, amen, and we will do our part. We'll give you information, amen. If you want to just accept him, accept the Lord, Jesus Christ is your Savior, you can come right now. Amen. you God keep you is our prayer amen and those of you who are watching by YouTube God bless you thank you so much for joining in this morning we do pray something was said or done that would help you on your journey God bless you God is not through with us yet but we cannot I will not lose hope amen let us pray Eternal God, our Father, we come in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for this day. We pray, Master, that something was said or done that would help us along the way, O oh God. And we just ask for you to just go with us and stand by us as we journey this way. Father God, help us. Help us, Father. Stay focused on your will and your way. Father God, if there's any wicked within us, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will remove it, that we may be the servant that you're calling for in these last and evil days. We love you, we honor you, we praise you. Because of who you are, we give you the glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And Father, we ask for those who have accepted you and the parting of their sin today. We pray that you would bless them. Give them, Father God. Show them the direction that you would have them to go. Father God, point them to the, to the local assembly that's assembling in your name. Father God, point them in that direction that they may worship and glorify you because you are God all by yourself. And without you, we wouldn't be what we are today. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Now we pray that the grace of God and the sweet communion of your spirit would rest, rule, and abide with us until we come together again. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer.